is. Um, we do have someone waiting here in the waiting room, so we'll let them in. All right. Um, welcome, everybody, um, to the uh, first uh, meeting of the year. Um, for the West Seattle Transportation Coalition. Believe it or not, we, uh, I do have presentation ready to go here. Okay. Yeah. All right, welcome to our January virtual membership meeting. Um, if you are just joining us, um, we have late breaking unfortunate news um, that our main guest for the evening, um, Ryan Packer, um, has uh, taken ill and will be unable to join us this evening. Um, and as we had had some other guests uh, fall through, this is going to be a very um, short meeting um, today. But we do have a few random bits of news and possibly some issues to discuss. Um, so. For the couple of guests who are here, you're welcome to stick around. Uh, for the board who are here, we're going to take care of some um, bits of information of uh, information and whatnot. Um, and then I assume we will wrap up pretty early. Um, uh, we will do, uh, actually, we could do full welcome and introductions for a change. Um, we can approve the previous minutes. We'll cover some old business. Um, we'll talk through some new business and highlight upcoming things, um, such as uh, our next meeting will be March 28th. Um, we have a, a tentative confirmation right now from our new District 1 Seattle City Council member, Rob Saka. Um, we should have a Vision Zero uh, represented by uh, from SDOT, um, as well as talking about uh, they're apparently working on an after report on uh, the recent death of Steve Holzman um, and some of the bicycling issues over there on Marine Drive Southwest. Uh, so they may be able to report out on that as well. Um, we're hoping we might be able to pull in um, Greg Spots, SDOT director, who's been with us um, early last year, I think March, I think. Um, see if he can join us as well. So we're hopefully shaping up for a really uh, fun and exciting meeting in March. Um, and if uh, folks stick around a little bit, maybe we can also talk about, um, especially from our guests, what do you want to learn about and, and who do you want to have a conversation with? Um, and then, as I said, we'll probably adjourn well before 8.30. Um, my name is Michael Taylor Judd, uh, if you're not aware, and I am currently the chair of the West Seattle Transportation Coalition. Um, I live in, um, well, usually we do purpose. I'm going to leave that up here for a moment for the video, but we can skip by that. Uh, we'll do introductions in a moment when I have a, a great slide for that. Um, our goals continue to be what they've always been, um, affordable and equitable transportation options, particularly in historically underserved neighborhoods, a transportation network that moves people and goods in an environmentally sustainable manner, investments in tra transportation infrastructure to match Seattle's growth, um, and then priorities. And so there's some little cross outs in orange here. I thought with our uh, first meeting, um, we highlight that we're changing over obviously into 2024. Um, nothing too earth shattering. Um, we're going to continue to support Sound Transit 3 planning, education, and outreach. We're going to continue to monitor the SR 160 Fauntleroy Ferry Terminal Trestle and Span replacement project. Neither of those we think are going to get resolved very quickly at any time soon. Um, we're going to make a, a, a just a really like a, a word switch. Um, we've been very you know excited to follow the West Marginal Way Southwest Safe Cor Safety Corridor project and protected bike lane for quite a while. Um, as our bike supporters will know, um, that finally got installed last year, and um, just about a month and a half ago, two months ago, I think I guess it's two months ago now, because it was right before our last meeting. Um, the uh, SDOT released a big uh, report out on how that went, and it looks 
exactly like we would have hoped. Essentially, like there are more people using it. There, are people when we ask them say that they feel safer using it with the protected bike lane, and it's had the impact on traffic seems to be like a mere couple of seconds. And so we couldn't ask for perhaps a more ideal bicycle project installation anywhere in the city than that. Um, so we're going to focus, even though it's a bit outside uh, on the edges of, of the corridor that we tend to watch, um, we, we, we are going to keep an eye on 2024 on the East Marginal Way Corridor Improvement Project, which also involves, involves a protected bike lane uh, because we have a number of folks who coming to and from our area out here in West Seattle Peninsula may be transiting through there, um, either going to or fro. And so that's a good place to keep an eye on. We'll continue to, um, we're, we're going to have a renewed focus on King County Metro bus route planning. Um, we are hoping to tee that up as well at one of our uh, upcoming meetings. And then we've been, we've kind of really just had it hanging out there that like, hey, sooner or later, move Seattle levy renewal planning will will be up. But now that we are into 2024, um, the plan uh, from SDOT, Seattle Department of Transportation, is absolutely that <laughs> there will be a renewal of the levy on the November ballot. Um, and lots of movement is happening internally to the department to stand up a team and get folks who will start to pull all the information together as to what that might look like um, and to look over some of the data from the outreach that was done on the Seattle transportation plan. Um, and so we will be looking to get SDOT folks out to talk about that um, relatively um, Eh, mid-year. I was going to say early year, but probably mid-year. My guess is that that should be ready for um, uh, teeing up in May, I would think, um, and some summer outreach in order to finalize that and get it on the ballot. Um, so look for that that change as we move forward. Um, introductions. So as I said, Michael Taylor Judd, he, him, his, currently the chair of the West Seattle Transportation Coalition, um, and I live in the North Delridge neighborhood. And so we'll go around. I won't force our guests to, to sh share if you don't want to, um, but I will ask our board members to at least turn on your video for a moment if you can and introduce yourself. Um, and the question we teed up for today, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this um, before we wrap up, um, is do you feel safe riding a bicycle around our West Seattle neighborhoods? <laughs> um, and I can honestly say that I haven't ridden, really ridden a bicycle around West Seattle um, Probably the entire time I've been here for a long time, it was because I refused to wear a helmet. And so since it was illegal not to wear a helmet, I wasn't going to ride a bike anywhere. Um, now that that's no longer an issue, frankly, I don't think I would feel safe riding a bicycle anywhere except on the Alki Trail along the beach where I'm really separated from cars because I don't feel very safe traveling in a car around our West Seattle neighborhoods right now, much less exposed to uh, um on a bicycle. Um, and I will toss to uh, whoever wants to go next. Well, since you're on the subject of bicycles, um, my name is Stu Hennessy. I am a retired owner of Alki Bike and Board. I guess that's the best way to put it. And uh, I live in the Puget Ridge neighborhood. Um, I feel very safe riding my bicycle around West Seattle. But we can't think of how I feel as a long, very long time of cycling experience when it comes to planning for others. I think it's very important we uh, don't consider our own skills. We, we consider the skills of especially people we want to introduce to it. Okay, I'll Absolutely. jump Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to, my name is Deb Barker. I'm jumping in. Um, yep. I'm, uh, my community is Morgan Junction. I'm the president of the Morgan Community Association. Um, and, you know, <laughs> do I feel safe riding a bicycle around our West Seattle neighborhoods? I used to. I used to. And then I stopped for the longest time and I haven't got back to it. I do recall riding my bike up Avalon pre uh it's not traffic coming pre bike lanes and that was pretty terrifying 
Um, I've also ridden my bike up Jacobson and that was invigorating because I was actually, I kept moving and I didn't stop. So that was amazing. But I, that was, you know, a long time ago. Now I look at things like the Avalon Hill with the bike lanes and I am with Michael that I think about the only place I feel comfortable riding would be on the Alki Trail. Maybe it's something about the hills, the narrowness of the the bike paths. And um, yeah, I want I want more than a uh, bollard uh, separation between myself and and something much larger than me. Yep. So I'm Kate Wells, uh, she, her, I live in Alki, and I would say I, okay, I, I'm, I'm a leader of West Seattle Bike Connections, so I um, try to bike almost everywhere I can, um, but even so, I feel, I would say, mostly safe in many places in West Seattle, but not all of them. And um, I plan my routes very, very carefully to stay on the greenways and the bike lanes. And I spend a lot of time if I'm going someplace new, like on uh, Google Street View to see what that street looks like. So I don't end up in a situation like I was trying to get to uh, mutual materials on my bike. And I was on the sidewalk on the Boeing Access Road, and then the sidewalk ended. And I don't want to ever deal with that again. So, all right. All right, uh, I'll jump in. Uh, Larry Weimer. Um, uh, live in Admiral, uh, administrator for the uh, District 1 Community Network, also on the board here. Um, as far as riding a bike around, I don't think I have been on a bike in 20 years and I sold the great mountain bike I had probably 15 years ago. So uh, that was a younger me doing that. All right. John, are you able to share anything or drop something in the chat? And then I, I'm guessing our guest may be named Hideko. Um, you as well are welcome to... Uh, Come off camera and talk, or if you're more comfortable dropping something in the chat, feel free. Hi, um, uh, I'm not sure if my camera's working. I can't see myself, but good good evening. My name is Thomas Noise. Um, I'm oh, using my okay. wife's I'm using my wife's um, computer, so her name is Hideko. Um, uh, I don't have a camera on my old clunker computer. Anyway, I live up near the Admiral District, um, and I was invited to this meeting by Phil Frick. Um, I met him at the Admiral Neighborhood Association meeting a couple weeks ago. I live about six blocks southeast of Hiawatha Park in the high school. I'm a soon to be retiring senior transportation planner with Washington State DOT. Um, and I do actually am, am involved in bicycle and active transportation planning. I actually myself haven't ridden my mountain bike for a number of years now. Um, I think based on previous comments, just concurring that um, based on observe, I do a lot of walking around West Seattle and I walk down to Alki every Sunday, but um, based on observing driver behavior around here, I, I think it's a little bit concerning to be a bicyclist again, unless you're on a completely separated bike path. So nice to meet everyone. And um, sorry for the mysterious entrance here on the name and so forth, but. No worries. Hey, Thomas, um, this is Deb. By any chance, do you work with or worked with someone named Susan Everett? Uh, yes, I did. I knew Susan. I didn't. I didn't work with her a lot, but I certainly knew her. Yeah, she's retired okay. now. She's retired. Okay. I, yeah. Thanks. Uh, just names from my past. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, okay. I know Susan. She was. She was a really good, good, really good engineer. We had a big send off for. Her. She retired last year, I think. Oh, not that long ago. Okay. Great. Yeah, you know, year ago. I think about a year ago. Yeah. All right. Well, we're glad you could be with us, Thomas, and Absolutely. you'll see. It. You'll see how we roll with uh, with the unexpected here this evening. Sure. Um, and then John dropped into the chat. He says, I'm John Wright, he, him. I'm on the WSTC board and I live in Seaview, just west of Alaska Junction. I'm a very casual rider, but I feel safe. My limitation is my ability to navigate the topography of West Seattle. He says, I have kids who love to ride, but do not feel comfortable having them ride places other than places like the Alki Trail. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of us who are like, yeah, we need a lot more bicycle infrastructure in the city. Um, and I think 
I, I think Gastot is well aware of that, um, although we'll be talking in a few moments here about how uh, maybe things always don't go so well. So, um, I'll Which is a good moment for me to do a disclaimer that anything I do or say tonight are the opinions of myself and myself alone and do not reflect the opinions of my current employer. <laughs> you need to you need to say that without sounding silly, <laughs> Michael. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. <laughs> Larry. I just, want, I just want to let Tom know, yeah, I'm uh, the one traffic licensed traffic engineer, transportation planner on the board here. So, and Larry, I think we've met before. I recognize you. it's probably been a while. Um, I I went to West Seattle Transportation Coalition meeting many years ago, and I knew Ray Kruger many years ago, and okay, he was on yeah. the board, and also Mark Jacobs, but that was probably ten plus years ago. Thank you. All right. Um, so speaking about bicycles and SDOT, uh, Seattle Department of Transportation projects, um, if folks are not aware, uh, big alert uh, that needs to get out all over the place, um, SDOT has is, I think, has closed, right? Mm -hmm. Already, thank yeah. you. Um, a section of trail near the east end of the Spokane Street Bridge, effectively closing the trail loop under the ridge. You can see the graphic there. Um, and forcing all trail users to use the crosswalks and sidewalks at the intersection of Southwest Spokane Street and 11th Avenue Southwest. It's been interesting to see some of the comments out there. Um, there are lots of people, I think, who never went near the trail loop um, and weren't even aware that it was there. And <laughs> there are other people who only use the trail loop and are really pissed off that they're going to be off of it for quite a length of time here. In particular, um, there are concerns that uh, we did have uh, a bicyclist yeah. killed at that crosswalk precisely because during daylight hours and during like reasonably good conditions because people like to speed and not pay attention there. Um, so if folks who have concerns about that, please, uh, please, uh, send those in to the appropriate authorities um, and 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 let us not know how you feel about that. Uh, the trail will be closed until sometime in April while crews install a new communications line uh, for the low bridge, the swing bridge control system. Um, so they're actually like removing lines from the upper bridge. They're putting in brand new lines that will help uh, with, you know, we're, I feel like we're slowly just rebuilding the entire lower bridge piece by piece. Um, but hopefully that will uh, help uh, stop some of the uh, the difficulties and problems we've been having. Uh, there was an opening problem with it just uh, earlier this week again. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments before we move on? I will see it, say at least uh, one of our West Seattle Bike Connections members already found a sort of sneaky way um, around crossing at the foot of the bridge. Um, he took the loop route. And then if you see on the left-hand side of the um, the like orange dotted line where the trail is closed, you can kind of get up to Southwest Spokane Street there and then ride on the sidewalk to the rest of the trail. So it sounds like a calmer crossing than the foot of the bridge itself. So people essentially go up towards Terminal yep. 18 and then make a right? Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. Good to know. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get somebody out there with a video camera to videotape that. <laughs> Have you advertised that, Kate, on um, a little bit of, of what's the Bike Connections Facebook or anything? No, I could talk to Don about that. I don't have control over the the Facebook or anything, but it was just one person who said they tried it that way and it worked well. So it could um, be tested first then. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can say that um, uh, Seattle Bike Blog did a nice write up and had a couple of ideas for maybe improving some safety around there, and I have forward that forwarded that on to. Uh, the SDOT person who I know is on this project. So hopefully that will get some attention and traction. Um, Michael, going, who's the oh, SDOT yeah. person on that project? Um, it's Matthew Howard. Okay, is he new? Um, 
Doesn't matter. Okay. Sort just, of, yes. We haven't had him. No, we have not That's, had him. Okay, not. Matt Howard. All right, Matt. Thank you. Um, let's approve previous. <laughs> excuse me. Let's approve a previous min meeting minutes from November. Well, we have board folks here. Um, as always, people who have not been with us before, um, we have been uh, recording and posting videos of our events and our meetings um, since uh, since everybody went online during the pandemic and it became super easy. Um, so you can find us uh, at, on YouTube um, as well as um, we try to always go live on Facebook. And so you can find videos there um, as well. Uh, would somebody like to um, make a motion to approve the meeting minutes? I move we approve the meeting minutes as submitted. All right. Is there a second? Second, Larry. All right. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? John says aye. All right. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, moving on, I thought I'd also call attention to um, recent, as I mentioned this uh, earlier, but here are some of the details. Uh, if folks want to check out the uh, ASDOT blog post that was uh, went up December 5th, um, data shows more people biking and walking along West Marginal Way Southwest without impacting freight travel. Um, and a few, of, a few out of glance uh, things from their reporting was that since installing the changes, we've seen a 53% increase in weekend biking, a 144% increase in weekday biking, and a more than 90% increase in people walking. Uh, meanwhile, vehicle travel times, including freight, have increased by less than one, per, one second per trip on average. Freight trucks continue to be able to reliably travel along the corridor based on our analysis. The new protected bike lane closed a gap in the Duwamish Trail network, providing more options for people biking, greater comfort, and more predictability. And the project advanced our Vision Zero safety goals, um, eliminating things like high-speed passing, um, slowing folks down closer to speed limits, improving sight lines at the driveways, and just generally making it a little bit more predictable. Um, and as folks are always saying, well, I never see anybody using it. Here is photos with people using the bike lane. Hey, Michael, I just wanted yeah. to point out that we did have a uh, accident at the, one of the crossings last month. Oh. Um, the cyclist was hit. Uh, no, in, no serious injuries as far as I know, but I didn't hear anything on, on the follow up there. That crossing can be dangerous. We had several pictures submitted of. Uh, the crosswalk light with um, a go or a white symbol um, and cars still coming through. So yeah, good point. Sense. Yes. Sorry for a moment. I was like in, crossing the bike lane. Like I had missed that, but no, you're talking about actually in the crosswalk mm -hmm. with right. the Cross signal light right. crossing right. the street. Yes. And right. that's Which where we crossed very to the scary. trail. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's difficult to get the traffic to to want to slow down when they're going already fifty to sixty miles an hour. I guess. Right. <laughs> so you know, a stoplight doesn't cut it. I'm no. very tempted to go really old school. If anybody remembers years ago, um, when one of the city council legislative assistants was killed crossing like Admiral. Admiral Way right over mm -hmm. by uh, Alki Mail and Dispatch. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the, right, right, right. Uh, the Admiral folks did, maybe you remember this, Larry or Thomas, um, was a whole bunch of people basically gathered a couple of nights during the week at like rush hour. And there were some signs and things, but essentially it was just a group of, you know, it'd be like about a dozen people, different ages and whatnot. And essentially just sat there, pushed the button, Everybody, or, or was there even a button there at the time? Yeah. I think it was just, yeah, yeah so there was sort of, oh, I think it was flashing beacons was all that was there. And so we'd hit that, and then everybody would walk and make all the traffic stop, get over, wait a moment, hit the thing, and everybody would go, and we just spent like an hour, hour and a half doing that, um, and really just driving home to people, like there are folks here, and we're going to make you stop. Um, and, you know, I sort of thought about that and just thought, you know, if people think they're going to run, then we're just going to like, let's go out there and let's go out there with cameras. And if you think you're going to run past us, we'll take a picture of you. 
Well, and to that end, I know with the West Seattle blog had comments about it's a standard procedure to ignore the light uh, of that crossing. Um, and I asked the question, and I apologize, I haven't gotten back, but um, does that route qualify for cameras, speed cameras, or traffic light cameras, running traffic light? I mean, and as I, I re didn't think so, but I didn't, I was hoping. <laughs> as I recall, it... this was precisely one of the streets that like, like this in Alki that council member Herbold advanced at the time that they were looking at that yeah because it's a racing street oh okay they yeah herbal tried to get a special car back because normally i think speed cameras are only around schools or parks that's what i thought but yeah i just didn't remember all the minutia of the program uh, i think it passed to the yeah i think so bill. i mean i don't know when there are any plans to actually like anywhere it seems in Western Washington. Um, I'm not sure we're aware of any plans for anyone to sort of install cameras right at the moment. Um, but uh, like new cameras, there are cameras like all over, but well, I, um, any new ones. Um, so Sarah you know, Zora maybe. had been on that project, but I'm sure she's off it by now. Who would be? Do we know um, I do not that? know offhand. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad to look into that, but I'm leaving town uh, for three weeks in a couple of days. So I don't think I'm, it's going to, it's not going to make it on my, onto my triage list. I think it could probably wait three weeks. Okay. I'll, I'll dig into that because uh, I'm a firm believer in stopping when there is a red light. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, you would think that would should be a basic thing, but it's uh -huh. currently not for people anymore. Um, any other thoughts, comments on West Marginal Way? I will say if you dig into the report, it's really thorough and fascinating to read. The report on levies at work? The, the West Marginal oh. um, analysis specifically. It's very in-depth. Good. As yeah. it should be. They they uh, went through quite a lot to make that happen and for the right reasons. <laughs> this this was an opportunity that presented itself because of the of the detour that we had. Yep. It was a temporary a situation. Um, luckily, we seized on it. I think we need to keep our eyes open for those opportunities uh, like this and, and make these things happen. One of the things that I, I think is very impressive is the weekday biking was so much more increased than the weekend biking. And that indicates transportation use. Yeah, yeah. And Hi, I Don. Think, I think it's only going to go up once things come around and get warmer again. I think it's... The, oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um... One more thing I want to toss up here. Um, sorry, this is really small and I won't read all of it, um, but I wanted to capture it all here again in case anybody on the video wants to look or folks following on Facebook. Um, I believe I forwarded the email to the board if they hadn't already gotten it. Um, but Skylark. Also on the West um, Seattle blog too. So Yeah, uh, Skylark over here in North Delridge put out a very interesting email to its community um earlier this week um you know it's not it's not attacking light rail um you know which you know kudos to them for that but really just an honest direct um plea as some people called it to to you know their friends family and beloved patrons to essentially say hey you're probably aware that you know west Hill light rail extension is coming and as it draws closer um they're directly in its path and you may not be you know people may not be widely aware that there are real challenges facing skylark as well as their neighbors at mode music alki daycare which we've heard about which is down below behind them in the office park uh, PNTA still has offices in the office park back there and a whole bunch of other places. Um, I don't think folks realize just how many businesses are kind of hidden down out of sight there uh, below where Skylark announces are um, and Nucor. Uh, and that uh, 
because of the way sort of because of the way the laws are written um if you there's a lot of things in place to protect uh homeowners and residents uh apart you know, I shouldn't even just say homeowners renters um but really make sure that people who get displaced can get into places <clears throat> nearby that are comparable have a lot of support etc um but because of the way our laws work in uh Washington state and some of the um bans kind of on uh on um government funds going to support specific businesses um essentially most of the time they can they can get up to fifty thousand dollars in associated costs to help them move and that's it which you know that would be a lot if you're a homeowner that's not a lot if you're a well-established business that's not a lot if you've got a particular space that's really built out and moving means not just the you know the cost of the property or the building and finding another suitable one nearby but the cost to build out can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so they just kind of brought that to people's attention. Hey, we don't know how long that's going to be, um, you know, but they've been a music venue in Seattle for ages. They do all ages shows. They do community events. They do LGBTQ gatherings. And they essentially just said, hey, if you uh, love us and if you sympathize with us, like, stop by. Stop by again. Stop by a few extra times. You know, if you've got ideas, share them with us. Um, and so I, I really wanted to highlight that both because I thought it was important to see community folks that are standing up and saying, this is, here's how this is affecting us. And I also appreciated that they were like, and we get that this is a good, important thing. We just need help moving if you want us to still be here. Um, and so uh, check that out. If you're fans of Skylark, you know, be sure to go and drop in and offer some business or if you've got ideas or you want to, you know, I've been talking for a while with folks like Alki Daycare and whatnot um, about are there ways that we, maybe we should start lobbying our electeds to see what can be done. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure that thing, I mean, some of the ideas we've had, I'm not sure would help uh, you know, a fairly standard business like Skylark, which is a restaurant and bar and, you know, music venue. But I think for some of the other places like Alki Daycare or Mode Music, that's primarily providing classes to um, to youth and young adults. Like, I really feel like there might, they, this is something we might want to talk a bit about this year. Um, and what can we do to lobby and see, can something be put in place that just like we have things that encourage affordable housing, like why wouldn't we support daycares? Why wouldn't we support uh, preschools, educational programs, things that we've already established are positive for the community, are things that our city, county, you know, state government support, why wouldn't we create loopholes that essentially say, oh, here's another exemption, just like residents, that we need to make them whole and we need to find ways to accommodate them when we displace them so that they can come back and can continue to serve the community because those are the very things we want more of, not less of. Um, and I'll stop sort of. I'll get off the soapbox there. Does anybody else want to comment or ask questions or anything like that? Michael? Yeah. Do, do you know Hold if on. there are any initiatives like that going on? Because it seems like those are the kind of businesses we that, that make um, the local community vibrant instead of a bunch of chain stores that will come in. It, it seems like I'm not uh, aware of the right development now. ought to have required spaces for displaced businesses that at at equivalent rents, basically. I mean, I have spoken with Sound Transit to say, if anything, just like we can flip property um, at essentially no cost to afford for affordable housing developments uh, when transportation projects come through, like we should be able to do the same thing for at least daycare and other, you know, like, you know, recreation programs, yeah, education programs, like things that certainly benefit, you know, kids. Cause again, like I said, like we subsidize that elsewhere. Like, why don't, why can't we 
Like we've got to build a station. Why don't we build the daycare space into the station? We have to build the station anyway. Um, like it seems to me that like there's some real obvious opportunities here. Again, unfortunately, I'm not sure that helps like a business that's like mm. we are a restaurant and a bar. Um, mm. But we certainly can help some of our community businesses, and it's a benefit to everyone. Um, Deb. Um, I just want to share that when I was speaking with uh, the folks at Alki Beach Academy um, about who they've talked to about their concerns of relocation, um, I was aware that they were in conversation with then council city council member Mosqueda and now King County King County Council member Mosqueda, who was uh, talking about trying to get something going. I'm not sure if uh, if anyone has heard if she's been able to uh, keep that promise, um, but that was one, th one thing that I had heard that sounded like some elected was uh, aware of it. Don't know what's yeah. gonna come of that. Yeah, but I think you should have Southwest Historical Society also do a a project on the Alki diaspora. Like all the businesses that used to be at Alki that are now spread hither and yon. Mostly hither. Like Alki Biking Board. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yeah. Come on, we're still there. What was it Alki Bakery in Soto? Yeah. Yeah, really. Alki Motors. What's the, there's another one. Oh, well, we've got uh, more injunction <laughs> has. Uh, uh gosh what sorry alki arts yeah. <laughs> morgan dungeon <Woo! laughs> well, we'd like to have skylark move up to admiral there you go so with all for, the vacant properties there are in the junction course that's a whole separate topic but people are sitting on their properties and wanting the highest rent and we've got other businesses that are forced out uh, town incorporated just because of maybe the, the same pe same situation. No, different sound transit, even mm -hmm. Stephen. <laughs> yep. Um, any other comments? All right. Um, well, Don just joined us, so you probably don't know. We had on our agenda that we were going to chat with Ryan Packer from The Urbanist. Um, but unfortunately, Ryan um, has taken ill and had to back out uh, last moment today. Um, so he will not be joining us this evening, which is why we're being much more leisurely. I mean, we were going to chat through some things anyway, but we're being a lot more leisurely and we're probably going to wrap up um, pretty quickly. Um, but we will definitely try to get him back with us um, again really soon because I've been wanting to continue our chat with a reporter series. And so I was excited to finally do it with a second reporter um, and not just Mike Lynn Bloom. Um, yes, Deb. When we're there, I do have two topics. All right. Um, new business. <laughs> um, as I said uh, at the top, um, our next meeting will be March 28th. Um, we do currently have a tentative confirmation from Rob Saka. I say tentative because, you know, Things can come up last minute with council members, so it's possible we'll end up with staff, um, but he has uh, confirmed. Um, we're working on Vision Zero program and planning for the 2024 levy renewal with, from SDOT. Um, possibly uh, get Greg Spots, the SDOT director. Um, planning uh, for future bus routes from KC Metro. We're working on a few different things. Um, uh, are there any meeting topics? I mean, the board has chatted a little bit, so it's really like, hey, Stu and Don, and uh, is Thomas still with us? Um, are there uh, things that you want to learn about um, or you think we should be having a conversation with? So we make sure to sort of add that into our planning for the year. I'm just checking in to see what's up. And... All right. And anybody who follows up on Facebook or watches the video here later, feel free to uh, send us, you know, 
leave a comment on the Facebook page or um, send us an email at info at westseattletc.org. Uh, yes, do. I just uh, had a uh, direct chat from John. I believe it was John that said uh, he'd like to know more about the walkability initiative for the Admiral District or Admiral Junction, as we're now calling it, because unbeknownst to me, we changed our name back to the Junction. Um, maybe in the future when we get more, I guess, more, um, I'm right now working on getting all the uh, uh, support from neighborhoods and that sort of thing. It's actually been really good support, um, but maybe that's something you'd like to know more about and see how we're going to facilitate that. We would love to have you anytime you want to talk. Okay. So it's kind of a small topic, but I recently heard about SDOT piloting a project um, in tandem with like Google, I think it was, to do like AI facilitated intelligent signaling. Um, I, I have a lot of questions. All right. Um, yes. Um, you're talking about the like the using AI with uh, traffic signal. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know who's in charge of that, but that would be certainly that would be a really interesting topic to get some folks chatting about, um, especially to see what kinds of results they're having. So that might be something good to. I mean, I think that's really, they're in the really early stages. So that might be uh -huh. something good to tee up for the end of the year. Okay. Um, when hopefully they'll have some really good uh, good data on that. Just uh, chiming in on this, that's, this is Thomas Noyes. I would likewise be interested in learning more about that. And I think maybe sort of a starting point to have a city presentation on kind of how does their current signal system work and, you know, signal interconnect between intersections, I think is always a big challenge in jurisdictions. And um, so that would that would be a very interesting topic. I believe the new um, Newman, not Numani, is there is the city traffic engineer. So he might be the best mm -hmm. person at SDOT to reach out to to find out about that. I wonder if they ever do tours of the, uh, the traffic center. I've been in it once. It's down in it's down in the Seattle Mystical Tower. I think they do yeah. tours occasionally. I, I went in a long time ago, but for a, a public agency court tour. I have seen, cool. I have looked in when the door was open. That's about as close as I got. <laughs> if if Rob Sock is on the agenda, that might be something we can ask him. And he's the um, you know, he's the transportation yeah. chair, so he could probably make it happen. There we go. Maybe that'd be something to set up in the summer. Um Anything else? All right, hearing nothing, I think, uh, yeah, take it away with uh Okay. Um, I just, somehow I keep getting messages from folks about some different things and hearing about them, so I thought I'd share. Um, I've been hearing from my friends who belong to seal sitters and um, the whale trail, um, people who, ha who have programs that are associated with the shoreline and they're concerned about the um, Alki safe streets. Uh, they're, they're, you know, I've been sent a lot, of, just to, uh, to clarify, I've really tried to stay out of some things and not read in depth about them and not study them because I'm I'm already maxed out on all everything that I stick my nose into. So, uh, but I've heard from different people about the safe streets uh, permanency on Alki, and people are throwing out words about a street vacation, which I know it wouldn't be happening, um, or or maybe it is, uh, but. Uh, I don't think that we ought to take a stand on it, but I'm just wondering if anybody, um, and maybe Michael, you should just be plugging in your ears because isn't this your project? Yes, I am not going to comment on what I know about this because right. I am currently the outreach lead on uh, right. the Alki Healthy Street. 
Okay. So you just mute yourself. There we go. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I, uh, I don't have the ability to calm these people down about it, but it's very weird to have several different groups with shoreline, uh, programs, um, and I just wanted to bring it to attention to the group. Don. <laughs> I could just mention one thing. I happen to live with a co-leader of. Yes. Seal Sitter. <laughs> Seal Sitter. <laughs> and Seal Sitters does not have any position opposing the. Okay. The street on Alki Point. There well, that's good to know. Members I... were alarmed, but I think we know that the street is not being closed to traffic and it's. And it has parking, including handicap, you know, ADA accessible parking. And it's not all going away. And many of us walk and ride bikes to it and we'll be able to do that more easily. So I mean, I looked at the, the <laughs> plans, I didn't do it in depth, and I, I see parking being removed and I see other amenities being added for parking. And sure they're maybe not as convenient as everyone would want, but when someone threw the words uh, alley vacation at me, I just thought, no way. I don't see anything in here. So does anyone know if there's an alley vacation that's occurring with this? Sorry, a street vacation. Didn't think so. Good. <laughs> okay. So that's one thing that I've been hearing. The other thing that I've been hearing is um, from the, oh, Jesus, this is still Alki. What do you know? Um, I mean, I have had a conversation, a very long conversation with the brand new um, president of the Alki Community Council, ACC, and, you know, welcomed her to, uh, well, she she took over from Tony because if there was no president, the Alki Community Council was going to fold. So she didn't want that to happen. So she jumped in. And that's really wonderful uh, that she did. She's also concerned about a traffic situation in her neighborhood. I just wanted to share with the, with the group here that I invited them to come and talk to WSTC about that. Um, and, uh, and also to find out, does anyone know, apparently the Waze and uh, Google Maps uh, directs the visitors to Alki along off the bridge, up Admiral, um, down Admiral Hill and then sends them uh, down Lander at 50 into 56. And um, that's like such a, that's like a crazy intersection, a crazy roadway. So does anyone uh, have ideas about that or has anyone heard about this this situation and does WSTC want to get involved in that in any way shape or form I was suggesting that SDOT would probably want to do one-way traffic before they'd ever put in traffic um calming uh speed humps or traffic lights or anything like that I don't see it as a not as a NIMBY thing I see it as a <laughs> People get lost and have no idea where they're going and they're gonna be lost at 45 miles an hour and lots of accidents have been happening apparently. Kate, that's like across, the, not across the street from you but downhill from you. Pretty close and I've walked down that street and I don't wanna drive down it, I'll tell you. Um, Don and I actually met with her, I think a while back about traffic cutting Arlen? through there. Yeah, yeah. and okay. um, you know, um, I've been very curious how the city can influence the map companies uh -huh. and, you know, consider some routes maybe inappropriate. I mean, can the city tag things? Obviously, a road, if a road is closed, they know quickly. And um, anyway, I don't know if the city can make, like, deprioritize some streets that just aren't appropriate. Yeah, it was really uh it seems so it, it's not like apples and apples where you have streets that have traffic problems and you can do so many things this traffic problem probably is because of these two apps that are like saying hey fastest way boom down oh. this hill and it's uh it's been that way for many 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 years that that's uh it's a route that is yeah, a natural I, route i know i mean i've taken it out mm -hmm. of there um yeah. but i just thought 
and, and maybe this is, is it the density that's causing more people to take that route? Is it just there's more people, more it's driving? I, I don't know, but it, I just it, wanted to raise it. It's quicker, but it's, I, she's a little bit um, overboard on it. I mean, there we suggested a couple of minor traffic calming measures. There could be a little traffic circle, perhaps. There could mm -hmm. be stop. Um, Which, there could be a traffic calming hump on the on the flat, but not on that hill. Um, but you know, John, that SDOT is not going to put those things in. He's just really exaggerating the amount of traffic and accidents there. And which which street are you all talking about? There's, you know, it's just a tiny fraction of the traffic. When you come down, when you're heading uh, west, nor and then northwest on southwest, whatever it is, west on Admiral to get down to Alki, and you go past Garlo, and uh, it starts to bend. Oh, it's curving down the hill there, yeah. Right, and yeah. so there's the right, and I think that's Lander. That they call Lander. it Lander at that point, possibly. Yes. So you take the right, and it, it takes you down to uh, Alki. Oh, that steep, steep street that goes down the hill there through the residential. And then, right. then down to 56. Down to 56. Okay, right, 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 right. Yeah, that really steep hill. I know that. Sometimes we walk yeah. up that hill. It's a really long, steep hill. But, it is. It yeah. is. Um, so I just wanted to share that this is another thing that I'm hearing about on the transportation end. Again, I invite. I told her about Transportation Coalition. I invited her. I gave her my speech about ESTA, what ESTA won't do and may do and how many people need to die before you get a stoplight and all that good stuff. So um, <laughs> just kind of heads up board since we're all, it's just us tonight. <laughs> That's what I got. Yeah. If anyone is curious um, or has missed on the news uh, and why you may see a little less of me driving the meetings this year, um, especially if we really have lots of SDOT guests this year, right. um, I, uh, I have uh, recently taken on a position um, with SDOT um, on the public engagement team. I am primarily the outreach lead on the Healthy Streets and the Neighborhood Greenways programs. Um, so taking a whole lot of prior knowledge I have about our bicycle and pedestrian and, you know, need for improvements around uh, the city. Um, but that means I, uh, I will be commenting a lot less on such things and uh, and and not quizzing some of the people who are now my colleagues. Um, in particular, I had a very amusing moment uh, earlier today where I was working and I heard I heard West Seattle transportation and I was like, what? <laughs> and I popped my head out of my cubicle over to my uh, one of my colleagues because Jessica Kim from the Vision Zero program had come over to ask one of my colleagues about the project he was working on and whether he should, you know, they'd just been invited to this uh, to this meeting in, and, and they're going to, they're confirmed that they're going to attend in March. And did he have more information about the group or whatever that he could <laughs> offer her? And I was like, sorry to eavesdrop, but I can give you all the information you need to know about that invite since it originally came from me. <laughs> That's the beauty of cubicles. You can hear everything. <laughs> So, so, Perfect yeah. example of why of the value of working together in the workplace. <laughs> exactly. Um, so so we had a bit of a good laugh about that. Um, and so yes, so they're definitely planning on coming. I can I can confirm that. Um, but yes, um, we will see a little less of me, at least publicly facing. Um, and so asking some of our other board members or new me or, or new board members, um, since I know Thomas is thinking about it, um, may need to uh, to to step up um, and do a little more this year. Um, but I'm happy to be the tech guy in the background. Um, well, thank you, Michael, for uh, jumping in and leading the meeting tonight. I know that I was supposed to do it, but when everything fell apart, you did a much better job of uh, leisurely going through all the topics and going more in depth than I would have. So. Yeah, that's all I got, though. So, um, And we have all the faith in you, Kate. 
don't so we're looking forward to you <laughs> in March. You'll be great. Look at that. Exactly. There's Larry's thumb. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Raised up right. <laughs> If anyone has does not have any other things to bring up, um, we can wrap up and people can head out. I can certainly stop the recording and then we could just chat a little bit more. <laughs> um, is there is there a motion to adjourn? I'll move. I'll um, second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right.